Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Well, this is the one that I have been promising to uh, painting and showing you guys some things about oceans and painting oceans. And I'm gonna, I gotta do this one uh, of this beautiful little trawler trying to come in, I call it racing for home. Uh, coming in, I'm gonna put a little storm back here. Some nice, big, powerful waves. Uh, I had one I did several years ago, right back up over there, and uh, I still have to film that one. I promised some of my students I'd film that one, but we'll, we'll get to that one in the future. But I'll show you some of the wave techniques. We're gonna paint acrylic, and then we're gonna paint with a modified acrylic, um, and I'm really gonna slow it down and show you how to do some wonderful techniques for painting the movement within the water so we can get a lot of interest because we love a lot of water up front okay now also for the palette this is a little different than I've used before um, I have a Hansa yellow a, a yellow oxide and a naphthol red light a burnt sienna a green burnt sienna and these colors right in here will really help us make storms and stormy clouds uh, this is your thalo blue P uh, this is a pigment blue 15 when I'm picking out blues I will pick out blues. These are all heritage acrylics. I pick out blues that are what are called pure pigment blues, okay? And in other words, you can't make them. There's just no way to make them. But, um, and so you have to buy them. And I work with pure pigments as much as possible. And I try to pick a range. This one is a blue-green. This one, so PB15, that's the chemical index name. This is PB29. This is uh, ultramarine blue and um, it is a blue, blue violet. And so uh, it works really, really well, especially in the darker part of the waves in the storm, it'll head us towards our violet. This is one that you don't see me use out too much uh, in a painting, and it is the uh, cerulean blue, PB35. It is a one that leans a little bit to the blue, blue, green side, like a, like a, a thalo, but it is a little clearer um, and quite a bit a, a different. It's a little bit warmer. and. This over here is a mixed blue. Now this blue you can make. This blue I just put out as a shortcut color. This is a sapphire blue. Sapphire is a, a mixture of basically, and you can always tell at the bottom of your tubes here, if you look at the chemical index names at the bottom. So this one is a mixture of thalo blue, ultramarine blue, carbon black, and titanium white. That's what those numbers mean. And so those of you that uh, study color theory, got a little bit of white paint on my hand here. Can't, can't start out too, uh, too uh, dirty. Um, the, uh, those of you that study color theory, you'll know what those chemical index names mean. And so you know whether or not you can make a color or you have to buy it. So the pure pigments here are very important. So I'll be using all of these. Why? Because the painting is so heavy and blue. And so we wanted, like the one I did over there in the other trailer, I used a wider palette of blue, uh, more pure pigments to give me some of that interest. We'll talk more about that as we get going in it, all right? All right, so the board that I have here, I'm painting on a board. Um, I use a board because that's going to allow me to get some really cool detail. And I have some fun technique to show you for getting some of this wonderful detail on the, on the uh, trawler itself here. So... And we'll get into that. But uh, I use the board so I don't have to fight the canvas weave when I'm doing detail. But you can use a canvas if you fill up the weave a little bit, okay? And so what I did, this board here is a 30 by 20. So it's 20 inches high, 30 inches this way. And um, then I gave it a coat of white. After I gave it a coat of white, I took a big brush with some water and some sapphire and put on a very transparent wash of sapphire. That's my medium blue. That's going to give me, start me out with a little bit of harmony between my water and my sky, but I want to separate them later on and I'll show you why. We're going to put a lighter violet along the, the, the line here, darker violets over here. We'll get into all of that as to why. So I have the ship coming in here. It's going to be riding the, a trough coming down slightly here. Those of you that are in our memberships, I will put uh, final photos. I'll put some of my reference photo. I have a big reference photo right here. Um, and what I do is I build, I build basically this composition, and I'll show you guys sometime in the future here. Uh, build a composition in Photoshop. I put together multiple things together. I took a picture of a, a beautiful storm cloud that was right outside our building here uh, one spring morning. And that's what I'm gonna put back up over here. 
and I lived on the ocean for 30 years, so I have lots of pictures of stormy oceans. But uh, and then uh, the trawlers, and then I drew a trawler in there. I will put a, a, a traceable for you, a pattern kind of thing for th that you can use, and the photos and everything all into the membership. I'll upload those onto the community page. You just go over to the community page, and you can you'll be able to find those. Okay, so those of you that are in the membership, you'll have that if you want to paint that. Otherwise, let's get going. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some of the dark areas uh, onto my paint. Some of the real darks, core darks, uh, that's going to help me see, especially into the water. And so into the water that, I, that I'm going to be doing down over here, I will uh, uh, start out with as about a dark a bite as you can. And, you know, you get really clear, super dark violets by, you know, using your ultramarine blue and your red violet so this is phthalo blue ultramarine blue red violet sapphire there's my white right out here and so look at that beautiful violets those make right in here so it's ultramarine blue with just a little bit of the uh, red violet into that i'm going to put a trough right here i'm going to bring the light in this way so it hits this side of the of the trawler we'll put this side in shallow shadow this is going to allow me to put a big wave right here and it allow me to put a light warm kind of yellow white spray and into the violets which will be really really neat here and so when i'm going to come in here right now it's just pure just acrylic because i want this to dry and I'm just going to smear it and then just work it out. And I'll let, you know, some of this, well, all of this is going to go opaque. But this will allow me to see just a little bit of the movement. Look at the power that that violet has right there. That'll allow me to have a, a bit of the uh, interest uh, that I want to have, the streaks and stuff. Cause, uh, but eventually it's all going to be opaque and it's all going to cover up. But I do like to start that way. It gives me a feeling for how I'm going to build the ocean. So here's going to be this trough. We'll maybe make this wave folding over a bit. So we'll means we'll have a bit of that shadow, a little darker, heavier uh, color here, right up in here. So this will be the shadow. Maybe this wave. This will be another wave right here. And waves, as they as they build up, they push up in all different kinds of ways. So I'll look at some of my brush calligraphy that I want in there. Let's take a just a touch of that darker right into that trough right there. That'll be okay. Over to this side, I'm just going to whisper on some shadow and, you know, we'll, we'll come right up next to the boat. We'll put some, some light spray and stuff in there as well, but we'll, um, we'll also, you know, one of the things a lot of people uh, forget, even in the ocean, water reflects. So right over here, we'll actually put some of the white reflecting from the boat as well. So this might be one wave right over here. Uh, let's lighten this up and just show a bit. Let's add a touch of phthalo. I'm going to start varying some of my blues a bit too, as well. So we'll put a bit of a back wave back over here, maybe some wave, some lines and stuff cresting on it and stuff. Let's go just a touch lighter. As If you want to paint an ocean that has a lot of depth to it, one of the things you want to do is get your, your wave color and your horizon line color a little close together. We don't want to go too much on this one, but we will get them a little closer together. But I'm going to start to, as I work through some of the ocean, what I'll do is vary some of my blues here. And that's going to be a little too dark for the back horizon. So I'll just lighten that just a touch. And put in some of the motion, maybe this wave. And a good way to do that is as, you, as you're painting here, see I'm not mixing, I'm tapping my brush. And that's going to give you some, mo some you know, streaks, whatever your calligraphy of your brush is going to show. That's what that's going to, that's going to give. And so even with your first just kind of acrylic block in here, we're blocking in some colors. We can get a, a bit of the movement of some of this water that we may want to have here. We're not completely, you know, I like to, I like to, I, I make a plan. And I talked to you guys about that in, in uh, what I call the art of painting and stuff. The, and I talk about making a plan and everything. So in my mind, I have this whole plan. But I don't make it rigid so that I don't destroy my creativity. Let's put another kind of pushing up little wave. He's going to hit that and, and uh, cause everything to go around. Uh, dark colors, the darkest violet will come here. But now you also get a real dark, not quite as violet, but a real dark by adding 
uh, some of that thalo, because thalo is a very big dark. And so, see, it, I mean, it's hard for you, the camera, to see, but that dark is different from that dark. And that's the kind of stuff that we want to add a little bit of that in here in, in some X motions for some choppiness to the waves here as we uh, put some of that in here. And so this is all acrylic. I'm, it's all acrylic because I'm wanting this to dry here. And then I'll work on top of it with, a, with an extended acrylic technique that I'll show you that's really a lot of fun. It is really a lot of fun. So uh, let's go a little dark. Let's put just a bit of that dark, maybe not quite that dark here. A little bit of white with that. Let's see, I want some white water waves here. This would be the shadow side, so we'll push some of that. A little trough right down here. So that'll come in there. That'll be okay. And um, then I, I want, you know, one of the things is when you're in a stormy, that really makes it look stormy is when you start to get a lot of... Uh, a foamy action into the water as well. So we're going to want, I want to leave an area over here that I can get some of that foaming action to the water that will really give a uh, a nice uh, contrast to it. Let's, uh, whoops, I added extender by mistake. I didn't want to do that because I want this to dry so I can work up on top of it. So some of this I'm just going to kind of scrub in. We can even go a little lighter right in here where I want some of that foaming action into the water. And I'll work my calligraphy here just kind of all over the place. And that's going to be the, the churning of the water right around in here. And so work a bit of light. Let's get a touch of that. Cer when I'm going to make that foamy area in there, look at the cerulean with a bit of light. See, it's different. And it'll make a nice a nice difference right in there. Let's just work that around. This is going to be, this is right into this trough. So let's make a little high point right in here. And you can help you just, you know, how you would basically just a V shape here will make the high point for you. And then we're going to drop right down into that trough there. Now, it looks better when you're like <laughs> feet away. It really, it really does. It looks more like an ocean. When you get up close here, you go, oh my goodness. Right now, I'm just putting in churning motion. I'm looking for my real dark parts of my trough. We're going to have all kinds of lights and darks crossing in here. That's going to make the ocean churn up quite a bit. So I'm going to thin some of this with just some water and just push it on here and churn up your brush. Churn... Your brush calligraphy when you're painting a, an ocean like this is going to be so important. It's going to help us drive the wave. But until we put that power and the motion of that wave on, you're not in an area like right in here, you're maybe not too sure you can, you know, churn your brush up. Or yeah, I'm going to make this as a down trough, as the trough coming down. I'm going to take a little bit of both my blues and I'm just going to pull this. This is going to be the coming right down into the trough right down here. Like this. So I'm going to have some calligraphy, some motion. Let's even add a bit of white right in here so that this can come down like that. So you'll read that as pulling down, like he's coming down into the water there, okay? So this right up here just leaves me some nice, wonderful power of where that some of that wave will be. And now when I do the wave, I like to, well, I'm going to put some light up here. And I like to push up and down into a, when a wave is cresting, I like to push up and down and start to create some of this uh, broken edge movement right in here. And you can use a little thalo in the edge of some of those waves. As the water gets up a little bit more transparent, that's where I like the thalo to cerulean, more of the blue-green. Into the troughs and stuff, I like the more of the violets. Um, that changes, of course, depending on the ocean that you're painting, because the Caribbean's a little different. But that will, um, I mean, it, it's just kind of a, a nice way to kind of remember that. Let's uh, push some of that right up here where we're going to have that one right in there. Now, let's, uh, so you put in some of that power of that. It, it, this is just your first look with acrylic. You know, I'm going to really build on this. Now let's go over and let's just take some of this and model this. Don't mix it up to one color. Just kind of model it like this into your... So we'll get a bit of difference here. And all I'm going to do is put on some of the power 
or some of the motion of the wave like this. Just use the flat of the brush here, and I want this to kind of, I want this wave is going to be coming right in there and push up a bit. I don't want to, uh, it's easy when you're doing it with the brush like this to paint texture, but I don't want to paint too much texture in here because I want to be able to, to vary this. Now we can take some of this and just kind of drag this along to create, and you can hear my brush just skipping. That's the ferrule of the brush skipping along the edge. And this is a three quarter flat. That's what I'm using for this side. We're going to have some foam there. Let's do that in just a minute after I get rid of some of this extra. We're going to have some white and this is going to, and so see, I, I'm just kind of sketching and pushing the brush a bit, but I'm doing the first little bit of where some of the white water, and I want some of this white water chasing him just a bit right there, right up in there like that. And so you look at that, see, it just kind of gets it in. What is important, guys, is you use different parts of your brush and you kind of follow that, you know, you, you don't have to be perfect, but you kind of follow that, that, that rise and fall of the water. So this is going to rise up a little bit here. I can push up and down a bit, but that's going to rise up right up to there. Maybe this big one's going to push up here. I'll do a lot more of this. Maybe some little edges back up here, which will be along the horizon line here. Now, let's take some of this off, maybe a bit of cerulean, so it's not quite so white right in here. That's not quite enough. Maybe a touch of phthalo in there too. So it's not quite, that's better. See, it's not as white. And we'll push some of this into what's gonna be this trough area. I'm gonna put a bit of blue and cerulean right here. And you can see the difference. See now, see right in here. Like, see the difference between the blue and the, the thalo and the cerulean going up against that ultramarine right in there. That's where we're going to get a lot of really pretty uh, differences into the water, and it's going to look like we know what we're doing. But we're not going to do all of this pretty pretty stuff yet. Okay, we're going to do that on a wet layer, not the dry layer that we're doing here. I'll show you. We'll talk. It'll be a lot of fun. Was, I just love painting the oceans and the movement and stuff to the oceans. So right up underneath some of these, I'll put some, sometimes if I want that wave to be breaking light, I'll put a little bit of that cerulean and stuff right along the edge of the wave. And then right after that, I'll come in with some dark, some of my violets right up next to that scene. You get a real pretty transition of your colors up through there. Uh, you know, of the, from the shadow of the trough right up into the light. Let's take a little water with this, just a little bit of, we'll add just a bit of this wave foamy area right in there. That'll be great. And uh, maybe some medium value, so a little phthalo, a little cerulean right in here. Let's just push a bit of that right up there. And I got to put that bit of a light line edge. A little rolly wave right here. Right there is he's plowing through that wave. Maybe a bit of cerulean. I want to keep it just a touch more cerulean right here for right now just because the, the boat's going to be white, a version of white, and I don't want those to collide and distort my boat right yet. Let's put a little dark right up against that edge. Take some of that out. There we go. And uh, maybe even a little bit more of our shadow. I got rid of some of that nice dark trough that I want him to be coming down in. Right there, some of that power of that one coming down. So the, it's really, really easy, guys. It's really, really easy right now to get so wrapped up into the waves, trying to make them perfect. And I don't want you to do that. Basically, what we're doing is like the first step of an all primo. We're putting on the darks and into the lights. And then we'll add all of the real pretty motion and some more violets and, you know, some, uh, some wonderful stuff. We'll do all that. We'll do that art thing. No problem, okay? But we don't want to get wrapped up in so many little details and stuff right now. Now, I like that, but that's just too much of a line that way and a line that way. So I'm going to take just a bit of my cerulean and stuff and take that off right there. And maybe uh, a bit more of my darks right here to 
really push that trough. And this is the shadow side of the wave. So I get it more dark right there. Push that right up. That'll be, that'll be, that'll be fine. That could have not quite, but just a bit fading off there like that. So we got like that. We don't want to make waves that are lined up or even or anything like that. So I'll have to be a little careful right there. Let's bring this power of this one up just a bit more. And then that's going to give me kind of an idea about where I'm going to paint some of the, the stuff going on here in this painting here. So it's nowhere, you know, near at all where I'm going to go, but I can see some of the movement there. Does that make, especially when you step back, <laughs> you can see the movement. And that's a good thing to remember. We don't want to get anything in here that, that's really, really smooth because at eight feet, and those of you paint with me all the time, camera one there is that eight feet away. That's where it looks like, that's what I like gallery paintings. You know, a lot of artists, three, six, eight, twelve. I know one impressionist that uh, paints for 15 feet. His paintings, he paints his look, so his paintings start to optically blend at 15 feet, which means he uses a lot more stark contrast between the colors than what I do. And But there's just lots of ways, lots and lots of ways. I like it to be about eight feet. So when you step back from the easel and everything, it starts to soften out and looks really nice. When you look at it up real close, it looks, oh my gosh. But then you step back and you see it and, and it looks quite a bit you know, different. And that's the optical part of Impressionism that I really like. All right, so we can catch that, that general feeling here. Now, uh, for when we come to do the the sky up here. I'm going to just kind of block in with a larger brush here for a second and some water. I'm going to push in some of the darker sky, a little bit more violet. And I look up there at my reference that I have there of, the, of that cloud, that stormy cloud. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful, bright, clear day. And there was this magnificent storm cloud uh, that was just I mean, it's just perfect. I'll put a, I'll put a copy of the photo for you guys. Uh, but it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And uh, so it had this real cool violet, where you can see in the photo, it has this real cool violet right back here, especially streaking up and down because it was into the rain shower. So we're going to do this many, many, many times and with my smaller brush. But I want to take some ultramarine blue, a little bit of that red violet, and I want to get that especially just a little bit more purpley. And I want to pull down. We're going to pull some light down here as well. But I want to pull up and down. This is going to give the motion of what will eventually be some of our rain shower. And then we're going to let it fade out, which we'll do. We'll, we'll let it kind of fade out right back up over here as it's heading towards some of the lighter light that we'll have. So that, that works really well over there. Then we're going to take some of this, lighten this up to this pretty kind of blue and violet colors and stuff together here. We'll add some water to this. And we're going to have this lighter little violet and uh, blues here that are going to come up on this side. And I'll use this kind of X motion like this to kind of uh, create some misty, you know, kind of a light day, but you see this, it's going to be softer back up over here. And I love the, like the thalo and a little bit of that uh, cerulean right in here, but a little more violet as I come down along the ocean. But as I go up, I'll get a bit more of that beautiful cerulean blue and uh, maybe a touch of the thalo in there to uh, give that extra little clarity there. It's a little darker right up here. More misty with my brush like this. And, you know, eventually this painting is, um, uh, and I'll be doing, you know, basically what I call a gallery painting with it, which means I'm going to be using a lot of paint, a lot of paint. Paint gives paintings interest, right? And so we use a lot of paint. And I'm not going to do it as thin as like I did on the Canadian geese. On the Canadian geese that I just painted with you, I just showed you, um, on those Canadian geese in flight, I just put in a whisper. No, I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to put in color. 
because I want to have a lot of power and a lot of interest to this painting. So everything will have a lot of paint in it. So at eight feet, this thing doesn't get, it gets softer, but it still has a tremendous amount of interest and it's going to come from the paint. And I want to have a tremendous amount of interest up here into this sky. So I'm going along this way and I'm going to go a little bit more phthalo right up here. So it's a little brighter. So you get this little bit of clarity to here to it right up in here. I just drew out some, painted out some of my ship. Now you can back it out lightly or you just do like I do and we'll fudge it in there. Um, and so we'll push that in right like that. Okay. And then up over to this side where it's going to be heading. So you see this blue we can, that cuts a little bit in half there. So I'll just take a bit of that blue right up over here because we know from good atmospheric and our sky studies that we've done that the sky gets darker up towards the top and it actually heads more to the violet. Let's put just a touch of that phthalo there. So it'll be a nice clear blue green heading right over to the storm, which will move over to our blue violet, which on a good summer day, the tip deep part rich of the sky is more ultramarine, blue violet. So let's push that right up over here, right over towards the storm, and then it'll slowly become more, and I just painted right out my cloud, but that's okay. So it's gonna go like this from the blue, uh, the blue violet, which is the ultramarine blue right over here, some nice, powerful model that in use of x motion here so you get some of that churning into the sky let that come right across now i'm painting this just acrylic and and that's a good thing because it starts to get tacky right up here see and when it starts to get tacky it grabs my brush a little different and as i lay some of this color out right up here a little bit of this blue violet it drags across the surface there and gives me a little different look rather than constantly mixing so yeah you can get a nice soft look and use a big brush like that and get a nice soft look but you don't want to blend you see if your colors and that's one reason why i like being an acrylic artist is my colors uh I have to work relatively fast. I, you know, when I was an oil artist, I tended to overwork and blend and everything would become the same. It doesn't happen anymore because I, I work faster and I leave stuff. Now I'm just going to push some extender right into this brush. I'm not even going to clean it. Just going to push some extender into that and set that down to the side where it helps the value scales kind of buried there. Um, and then what I'm going to do here is work in a little bit more, just an idea of that cloud. Maybe we'll do that with my one inch brush. And we can even do it with a little extender. It can start getting wet now. Let's uh, take some of our, so we're going into those violets. Let's take that blue, a little bit of our violet here. Now I want to dirty this a bit. So sometimes I'll dirty with a little burnt sienna, sometimes a little bit of red, and sometimes a little green, sometimes all of them together. See how it grays it. See how that instantly grays that color. Now I don't want to gray too much here. So just a bit here. And we'll look for you know where that bottom of that cloud is going to be. That's the dark part. Now why is it darker? through our cloud studies, we know that's because the light doesn't pass through that area. So the shadow belongs up underneath, and then we're gonna streak some of that down. We'll do this several times in through here, guys, so don't worry about having it perfect. I just wanna grab the, the impression of it for right now. Probably, move this over just a bit, probably a little better <laughs> impression of it than what that is there. We'll just streak this up and down like this. Add just a touch of water to it or a bit of extender if you want. Don't do it too many times, but we'll streak through just a bit. And it's a bit dark. That's okay. We'll just take a bit of light with this as well and just kind of pull through that. Because remember, we're going to paint with lots of paint. And uh, so this is just to give some of that streak and I want to soften some of that streak out. So I lift the pressure on my brush. See, when I lift the pressure on my brush, it just whispers across that surface there. And 
Then I'll, I'll tap through it a bit here too, to, so it don't, doesn't get too many straight, straight, straight lines. But we have a long ways to go. We'll be doing that again because I want to work a maybe a touch of light right up over here as well. I just don't want to end on the dark. I want some of that light and misty and rainy kind of look coming through here. So a little bit of that, but leave some of these kind of angled lines through there because that's going to give us our rain, okay? Now, let's go right up there by the top towards our blues. We'll step right over here, whites and blues, a little bit of the gray into that. Okay, just a little bit. We're going to keep it up, though, maybe around an 8 or a 9 in value. So that's a 9. It'll dry down to an 8. And <laughs> I paint on my scale here all the time. And what, what takes it off real quick is I put out a little bit of the hand sanitizer. And you can just rub it right over. Even though this has been dried forever and ever, you can just rub it there and start cleaning up your little value scale there every once in a while. So, you know, you can either laminate your value scale or do like I do, is just take some, print it off and put some pack, clear packing tape over it, you know, because I usually lose them pretty easy. So we'll look at our color here. See, it's a nine, but it's going to probably, they dry a little darker, so it'll dry down here to an eight or so. Okay, so that, that might be pretty good. We'll model that just a bit. And, uh, but the uh, value scale is great. Now, and, and again, Everything, all the links, if you want to download that value scale for free and everything, all the links are in the video description. The video description for this particular lesson has links to everything I do, okay? So let's put the more powerful light, like there's going to be a light cloud right up here, and it will we'll fade it down a bit. And I'll do more here. I might just blur the edges right now of that. We're going to paint in and out and, and paint these magnificent clouds. Don't worry about that. I'm going to show you that when we do the um, alter to the uh, change to acrylics where we're going to really slow them down. I'll show you some fun techniques to paint those here. And uh, so we'll just start that up. Let's put that up a little higher, a little wispy. We'll come down just little X's and a little scrubbing what we call scumbling of the brush there. We'll push that on, and I want it to dry. I want this to dry. We'll take a bit more of that light, maybe just a touch of water. I want this to dry because I'm kind of almost like I'm drawing, you know, the, the clouds here. I'm going to have a maybe another clear one that comes up, maybe a little higher right like that, but I want this to be the big one here, and then it's going to come down, and we got to remember where our light sources are and stuff. We'll add that in. And we'll scrub that down a bit here. And I'm just going to take some gray, some water, some thin color here, and uh, just kind of whisper that down here. Pull that down, whisper that down, whisper this. The storm's coming in, so we're going to want that to come right up over here. And sometimes I'll just do this real quick and soften with like my paper towel. I like that look as well. Because especially as we're as it's starting to uh, you know to diminish, that's where I like. Now we can you know you can indicate a little bit more of the light just by hitting a bit more white right up over here. This will all change, guys. This is just your first. This this helps us. It's it's kind of like what I consider the drawing of it here. We'll push some more light right up over there and. Uh, Let's hit a, a light area of the cloud right there. So light's coming from the, the left here. Okay, now we'll gray up some more, grab some water, and we're just gonna let this, this kind of gray and diminish here as it's coming this side, starting to pick up some of those violets and stuff right along here. And start to diminish down, maybe, maybe a touch of light, to say a, a lighter portion of the cloud right there and diminish down and again this will all change but maybe just some whispers of it so the storm is like coming this way and he's racing home isn't that kind of cool <laughs> you know it, it is i love it so let's take some of that grade so we'll take some blue some ultramarine here a little bit of violet 
a little bit of our of our um, bay, I mean our um, burnt sienna, and we'll put in some of the gray colors here. Maybe some of this cloud that's going to come right up here in the front. We got a lot to build on the cloud. So we'll have some light colors into the front and into the back and it back <clears throat> up into the front. We'll model this with some other color here. So you'll see. And when we go to the, the real wet part, this just puts in the what I call the structure, the bones, the skeleton of the clouds. And then we're going to come in and paint some magnificent ones here as we get really into the the painting of it because like, I want this to be I want a magnificent cloud and really light right here then that boat is just racing right forward okay all right so what I'm going to do here now is take back to some of my darker shadowy tone here maybe a bit more on the violet side here got to remember those shadows are real violet let's add just a touch of water here and push in it's a little too much phthalo right there, but that's okay. We'll push in the bottom, we'll soften. That'll be the bottom of that cloud where it's coming right there. Add just a touch more of that violet and maybe a bit of that. Make it just soften it with our paper towel. This gives us our, our bones, our structure of that, some of that cloud that's gonna be there and all of that going on there now let's while we have some of this let's go i don't i want to paint usually what i like to do is paint with as large a brush as, as possible this one has a little color left in it so i'll just clean that out real quick i always use the hand sanitizer hand sanitizer is great because you can use it to clean your hands as well everything that i paint everything that i paint with here is non-toxic and uh, so there, there's no worries about getting it all over your hands. There, it is absolutely non-toxic. This is the hand sanitizer I get right out on Amazon. And as long as it has like 60% alcohol in it, 60% isopropyl alcohol, it will work wonderful for cleaning your brush. Now my brush is perfectly clean. So this is a, a little half inch brush. And I, so I try to work as large a brush as possible. And what I'm gonna do is set up some of my light. So on the ship, I want light to hit right in here and on this little trawler so that's I'm just going to come in real quick and I'm going to set some white now this white will I'll paint out and change but I'm going to set in some white here and what I'm what my plan is basically here is I'm going to paint the bones or the structure of the boat uh, a little without any texture and I don't use texture because if I want to change something it's easy to change it. If I have texture on there, it's not easy to change it. So I want to put the bones of this in, and I'm going to want to pull up and down and side to side, and you're going to want to get rid of anything that has texture. We'll go, But we're going to go to texture after we have some of that nice uh, shape and stuff like that in. So that's, that's going to be light. And in this particular area here, uh, it's going to be light. You can have a, just a tiny bit of the, the blue there, but this will be the light band here as well. It's because the windows, this is the flat front of it. This goes at an angle and that goes at an angle back. So we'll have to get those, we'll have to get those correct by the time we're done here, which we will. The architecture of it is, is really nice. So I'm going to, I'm going to put that in. Now I'm going to gray this blue down, gray it down, sometimes a, a little bit more uh, which of the burnt sienna, which warms it, which is great because it's on the light side here. Let's just drop some of that right back here, which, you know, you can see it's warmer than the violet that's right there, and that's good, and that'll help us de uh, develop our, our ship here at the side. But as we paint the boat, one of the things I want you to do is shift. Sometimes use a little bit of the the violet here and so we're going to work warms, violets, cools. We're going to put all those colors and more in here on this uh, boat here, onto the side of this, onto the side of it. Many times, many colors crossing, because that's what's going to make it look really neat. But we'll do it more with texture and stuff. Right now, we're just going to go from light, work it across, maybe a little violet, 
back across a little grayer there, but we know where the light is hitting. We can see it here really well with that light. And work your brush, in, and that's what gives you a lot of interest. Work your brush up and down, some angles and stuff like that, and that's just going to give you so much interest. Let's go to the below it here. Push that light in. Let that light right here, right in like that. Okay, and go into some of your violets right up against the edge of that water there. Okay. So you see right where that light is hitting, that's what I want. And I'll just tap some of that back. That's what's going to help you get interest to your boat. And then uh, we'll gray it, even a little green and a little red in there to help some of that grayness of that color. That's all going to be good. If it looks too green, just keep some red in there. This is all really good color, especially back in here. You know, as you're putting in that back edge of that boat there see and you just you can even use your finger to tap that along what I want you to do is just paint really loose paint it really really loose pull some of that forward like that and just tap along like that using the edge of your brush that's what's going to give you lots of interest here try not to try not to paint smooth see I work those colors again see and see the interest that comes through there like that you just don't want to paint white so let's take some of that, let's lighten up some of that gray right in here. That'll put on the front of our, sh our the trawler here. You know, not quite as light. So we'll see where that light hit is here, here on the trawler. I'll tap that through like that. Okay, and uh, let's bring in some more light. Maybe pull that right in there like that back and forth a bit. It works a lot better after uh, some of this, and that's why, I, again, another reason why I love acrylics. I like this to kind of tack up, and then I work back and forth with more color. So there I did a horizontal. Here I'll do a vertical, taking some of that out, and that's where you start to get a lot of interest to your uh, to the trawler. Now on the other side, I'm going to blue and Cerulean is beautiful for this. Cerulean, a little phthalo, uh, not quite as much, maybe a little gray it with some sienna, but that Cerulean is really pretty on this side. And uh, so this will give us our cooler side of the, of the boat, maybe a little lighter, a little bit of water here, here. And so we'll just drop in this cooler side. So we're going to have a warm side and a cool side. And you uh, definitely see that. Now, this could even be darker, depending upon how much contrast I want to develop, which I'm going to want quite a bit, I think. We could put even a darker one in there, a bit more cerulean. And you can gray that cerulean really easy with a touch, tiny touch of that red. See how it grays? Boom. Grays down. And that's really pretty as another color right in here. Cerulean is a beautiful painting color. But you don't see me use it that much, but I do I, I do use it in a lot of commission paintings and stuff and where I really want to get a lot of uh, variation of my blues. You know, so that's, it just, it's magical in something like this when you start to get all those colors through there like that. It works really well. Let's take some of that real dark here, gray that up just a bit, and we'll put in the uh, the edge. See, this is the edge of the the pole there on the wheelhouse. Maybe, uh, and so I'll, I'll come in and work some of these edges here. So here's this one on this side. We're going to want in some cerulean here. Tap that through there, and work that, and then we'll bring it in uh, just a bit lighter. Still gray, because it's up in the front, but a bit lighter right up here. Maybe, uh, and see, I'll work these colors several times, and that's going to be the that's going to be the the real ticket of it is working the colors several times. And if you, you know, if you just slow down and and you know start to really work those colors that's what's going to make the boat amazing you know working and getting some more i'm going to want to put in touches of reds and some hits of the yellow and stuff like that let's get some of the darker 
a little bit of water. So I start all this in mostly acrylic and then I will do the modified one here in just a minute after I get some of this dry. We'll put in some of the other parts here. We'll want a little cooler, a little bit of that wheelhouse, a little lighter right there. So I'll go back and forth right in there, maybe just take that and tap that across. Sometimes I'll stop the shadow kind of harsh and that's, you know, that differentiates like a the side or the cut edge of a, of a, you know, an angle or something like that. So that goes in. Now, let me show you something kind of fun. And I started doing this on ships about 15 years ago that I, I really liked. And I'm going to find, got to find the absolute perfect brush. You know, I like a, 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 a synthetic brush to do something like this. This is a number six uh, Filbert synthetic. It's a little stiffer than uh, what I normally, you know, use the fusion that you see me normally use. Now, what I do is I use these all the time to rest my hand. You've seen me. I use these boards. I put it up onto something here and I rest my hand and draw a line. But I also do this. I take those boards like this, you see, and I tape on. These are two three quarter inch little blocks that I have here, okay? Um, and I tape on these blocks here like this. And I want to put up the light mass stuff here. So I'm going to take some white, maybe a bit of my dirty colors here, but mostly white, right into the, the filbert here like this. And I'm going to line this up and so that I can run the edge of my brush here along that. And I just hold it above it for a second and just run my brush and move it over until I see right where it's going to go. And then I lightly touch pressure and then run down like that. And that puts that mast on straight and perfect. <laughs> and But it can get some, see, I don't know if you can really see that, but it can get some edges. And you can always come in and just tap off some of the edges or blur it slightly like this to blur some of those little edges there like that. But it's a great way. We'll go up just a touch higher here and put on that little cap piece right there. It's a great way to uh, draw the structure and stuff like that on, on your boat, you know, because it has a lot of these structure elements onto it. And it's really easy this way. And so here I'll use a, a bit more of a gray. Let's do it this side so you can see right like that. And I'll just line that brush up right at that angle, hold it, pull down like that. And now I got that other structure in there on that other side. And you can use a, a smaller brush, you know, I like like a little short, uh, you know, liner or round to do any of the little rigging and stuff like that. But it really, really works well. You can also just use it as a rest and just come back at like this as a little rest. Sit the, set the brush, move it over a bit and just tap along every once in a while and that'll put on a little bit more of a highlight. But your brush runs, your brush is running on the edge of this. So the edge of your ferrule is running like this and that is what allows you to do perfect lines and stripes and all that kind of stuff, you know. So, but the blocks, now why the blocks? Because it lifts it off. If you did it flat, you, you, you know, without those blocks, your brush would be hitting the surface. So, and I like to use like three quarter inch blocks here because that, that three quarter inch when it's here puts me right past the flat part of that of that brush and so I'm running that right here you want you don't want to run the brush on it you want to run the edge of your ferrule so you can depending on the size of the brush you just tape a couple blocks there and that can give you some of the movement and some of the little edges and stuff here I mean the, the stuff that you want to do so I can use that right here I have some structure and stuff here onto the boat so I just come around here as I start to draw the structure and this puts in that structure really easy that I want to have on this boat just by drawing it like that. Let's see, that one comes across. So it's a and if it's a little wider, I change from the chisel to right to an angle slightly. And I'm going to let that fuzz just a bit. And sometimes if I feel I'm being too perfect, then I'll push my brush a bit so it gets a little more uh, fuzzy. Or if you're being too perfect, you feel like you're being too perfect, you can use like a bristle. A bristle brush will flare out every once in a while and give you some more of those lost little edges and stuff. And 
So it's kind of useless to put a whole bunch of this stuff on now, but it is kind of fun because one of the things that I like to do is paint my edges back and forth. So here I got a little, little radar system right up here. So we'll put just a little edge of this here, there, right up there like that, and uh, a little block for it. So it allows you to do some of the little details and stuff here. And uh, yeah, it's uh, just a great way. <laughs> I just absolutely, when I started discovering these ways, I found these ways, uh, old master showed me this, how to do this. And uh, I just absolutely love it. But see, I can come back and I can hit highlights and shadows and start adding more stuff. So I'll be using this to come around and do some of the, um, some of the rigging and stuff like that. And especially towards the end of the painting when I'm doing some of the final stuff, this little guy here is fantastic. But the key is those blocks, guys. Get the right height of the block that works right with that brush that you like to use. And if I'm using a four or a six filbert, I like a three quarter inch block underneath that and it works magical. Um, let's just go back to, um, where's my, here it is here. And let's just put a, a bit of those, we'll take some violet, dirty violet here with some burnt sienna in this. Thin this out with some water. Very thin, very, very thin, washy, washy thin. And we'll put, uh, there's the plates the, the, uh, of the, uh, um, the nets here. We'll just drag this down like this here. See that, that broken stuff? That's going to give us the edge of the net. So not too much paint, very thin here. And uh, we'll get the idea here of some of these nets pulling down. Don't fill it in all the way here. Just kind of push that down like that. And it's going to give us the impression of these nets. So don't, but where they come together up here, well, that's where you're going to have more net kind of overriding each other. And that's where you can get a little darker. But when it gets down here at to the, uh, the end of it down here, you want it to be just kind of whispery right down through here like that. Just kind of whispery little edge and you know I like that broken back and forth and if you get it too solid then you can take some of your violets and some of those other colors and put those in now let's also just with this thin color we'll come in and just very carefully here start some of those darker part of the shadows into the windows there we have you know we'll put all kinds of other colors in there you know there is, uh, uh, in the reference photo I have, you see a little guy standing right here. And I just might put that in. I'm not, I haven't decided yet. Because I, I have painted a lot of ships with little guys, little fishermen in there. And so we'll just drop this in there though. And yeah, that'll work. There's just, just a little triangle shape right here that comes on that side right there to get that. Maybe uh bit of that lighter blue showing through there just a an indication of that and maybe just a touch darker up on this side so now what we have is we have our ship the boat the trawler here kind of based in the idea now I'm going to let it thoroughly thoroughly dry as a matter of fact, I'll probably go use, I had a nice question on there, can you use a hair dryer with this stuff? I use a hair dryer all the time and I dry everything and really well and that's going to allow me to come in and I'll show you guys some of the working here on the, uh, on the um, water. Okay, we'll come back into the water. So that's Basically, I haven't put in all the other stuff because we've got a lot to do before we can do the rest of that. But that'll give you the base, and then I'll, I'm going to go get this completely dry. I might even take a nice step photo of this for those of you in the membership. Take a little step photo. This is the first step of it, okay? I'll put, again, I'll put all that on the community page. And um, then we'll come back, and we're going to use a modified acrylic technique here, a really slow drying one of the fun one that I'll show you. And... Uh, to go ahead and take the water. Matter of fact, we can just go ahead. One of the things is you're going to leave so you can dry everything really well. Just take a damp paper towel like this. 
This is the beauty of the Heritage Acrylics. They reactivate with water for a couple hours. So since I've been painting a little less than an hour, I can reactivate this really easily right in here and clean off and uh, be able to, you know, just keep going with my same palette here, clean it all off. And we're ready to go dry this painting and then come back and we're gonna work on some water. I'll show you some fun things in water, okay? Be right back. Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, everything is thoroughly dry, which, you're, which is gonna make it really a lot easier now. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint with uh, some extender medium. This is the uh, Janssen Art Extender here. This is one that uh, you know, I developed years ago. Boy, I guess it was about 1984, 85. Um, and it works really well. It does not work with all acrylics, but what it'll, we're gonna use it, we're gonna take it with our large brush and we're going to put a light coat of it over the surface. Now, you can leave it like this and this will I mean, this will take hours to dry. It all depends on how dry the air is, you know, what you, uh, the humidity in your air. The more humid it is, the longer it takes to dry. But I'll have several hours worth of working time here. Now I'm gonna use this in conjunction with some of Derivan's open medium. And it's a, that's what I have right out here. And you've seen me use it before. What I'm gonna do is just take some extender and just thin out just a little bit of this open medium here and kind of mix it up together really, really well. I'm going to pre-paint some of the wave area that I'm going to work on, which is going to be right in here. And you'll feel, instantly feel the difference. It slides really, really easy here now. As a matter of fact, you can just run your hand over. Everything's non-toxic. You don't have to worry about it. And run your hand over it. I like to kind of level it off so I don't have any puddles of it or anything like that. And it uh, works really, really well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some of this thin open medium and extender together as I go ahead and work some of the wave. And I think I'm going to do this with my three quarter inch brush here. And I'll take out some of the other color here. I'll be painting with extender from now on because so it'll stay wet. I've done these kinds of techniques and sometimes it stays wet for, you know, 12 hours. It, it really takes a long time, depending on, you know, how much you mix it up. Now, I don't want it to stay wet that long, but I'm going to start out with making a violet shadow. So I'm going to take some of my red violet, some white, and some ultramarine blue here. And I will, of course, vary this. Sometimes I'll have more blue, violet, slightly different. Here, I'm gonna add some open medium to it and a little bit of the extender. This will keep it a little thinner, okay? And I'm gonna come right in here onto the violet side of the wave here, at which, I mean on the violet, on the shadow side where that wave is gonna go. And I'm gonna push some of that color in. I will then grab some additional violet here, model it up so it's not all exactly the same. We'll work that right along that edge. And then I'm gonna, and what I like to do is I like to move, and sometimes I use a brush, sometimes I use my finger, and I'll move these together just a bit so I can get some of that traveling of that, that color here moving through. And I like to also keep that dark out there, that real dark. Sometimes I'll add a little phthalo just to vary that color will keep that dark. See how it slides over the surface here really easy? This allows you, and see you can get that kind of transparency right into that. This allows you to put in the motion, the movement of that wave here, just like that. And, and also smooth some of it out a bit if you want. You know, I'm not necessarily interested in that yet, but so I'll put some of that along. I'll push some of the light right into that, or excuse me, the shadow. But, but it's a little bit lighter right into that. Sometimes I'll push, uh, like I'll take just a tiny bit of transparent, depends on the sunshine, bit of the yellow right along the edge there. And then I'll go back right into some of the, the warmth of the light part of the wave here, right in like that, and start some of that real light color. Now I'm gonna work back and forth, like on the other side over here, this, we're gonna work some of that other wave 
here. And the big thing is, is getting some churning going on in here. So I'll use the corner of my brush and I'll turn some of the wave like that, you know, just kind of fold it around, roll it around right in there like that so I can get some highs and lows of the light color in there as well. Little hits of it. So I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll go just stab at, almost stab at it real quick and get some hits of light and dark here, maybe a touch of the yellow in there and pull that across so I get some of that. So the waves, the waves are kind of going this way. They're being pushed in this way and, you know, then we'll, we'll get that shadow. We'll get that shadow here even more in just a minute. But I'll, I'll work these up and down into those edges. Like I'll take some of this violet and push and just lift and redress your brush. Only do it once or twice because that gives this good motion into the waves here. And uh, let's push this other little spot right in here. So we'll push some of that like this. This wave's kind of pushing up here a bit here. And then I'll take, I'll step it a little darker and move some of this through like, like that. And I usually do just real quick strokes like this just following the uh, the motion of that water here. So we'll do this a couple times here. Change that uh, color up a bit. Add some more blue so it's not quite so violet, you know, and pull some of that. Grab some of that lighter shadow and just kind of pull that through. After you, it takes just a minute to kind of start building up some of the color. And once you start building up some of the color, you'll get some of this lovely working the back and forth and of the of the colors here. And we'll grab some light. Let's grab some light. We'll make a light hit right here so you can really see that wave right there. And I'll start to use some thicker paint here and I will control so see I can start to get a lot of really beautiful looks to it and you step back there and you can start seeing some of that wave and I will control like I don't always to the white add the open medium or the extender so the white little tips will start to dry tack up a little quicker and uh, and they'll lay off a little bit different here and it'll give you some really neat looks here but they'll dry a little quicker so that when I come in there with a softening which I'm going to do they they don't soften quite as fast because they don't have that medium in it so I'm going to come right up in through here so I will sometimes you'll see me and I do this in other seascapes too I'll, I'll lift up to take off lift off you know some of that motion just like that so I can get that water you know, going different ways, just lifting off like that. So I'll put in light and dark, and let's get back to some nice, real dark color down in through here. Push that right back down. See and pull that. Pull really slow. Don't pull fast. Pull slow, and that'll leave slower. Pulling slower leaves more streaks. So we can pull slower. And grab some of those nice streaks. And this is where I really want to work it. Let's put a little bit of that cerulean in there. That cerulean is a pretty color to work in there. Tap along into some of that here. Like that. There, that's pretty. And model in some of that beautiful cerulean. You know, let some of that uh, eat, whoops, get a little lighter. Up there by the edge, look at that pretty color right in there, see? Just kind of tap that in here. You can lift off, pull off, get some of that motion right there. Maybe that's going to be the edge of a wave kind of building up, and then you can come back and hit a little bit of the light turning water there, like that. Right in, and we'll, we'll push up. Take just a touch of this lighter cerulean here, right along this edge, right like this. And so I like to go from cerulean into some of those those violets right there. You know, that looks really good. You can put some of the, 
the violets up by the edges to make that wave seem a bit more translucent there. You know, some we have some light hits of it, but you can uh, just hit the edges of that. Maybe um, just a bit of the edge here like this, just tapping that along will make like a bit of the rolling edge there. You can lift up into that to create, and so I'm looking constantly at the the motion, the motion that I want this wave to have. See, and I'll push that in. Let's go, as we leave some of, let's grab some thalo and some of my open medium here and push that right through. Now see, this won't, they uh, don't mix up, pull slow, they don't mix up and you get those beautiful colored streaks through there, see? That's what I'm looking for. That's what's going to make this ocean really, really pretty and, and churning and stuff like that, you see. And so you and you work it all, you, you know, it slides. See how easy that this slides? It, sl it slides so very easy. You've got a couple of hours here of just some real fun working time. Add some once in a while open medium. It'll stay really wet. Pull this down. See how I can pull that right down there like that. It gives a little different look here. Right like that. Pull some of those colors. That's pretty. Let's get a little cerulean in there. This is what's going to give you the real pretty movement and churning to your water here. Bit of that cerulean right here. There like that and uh, grab some of the light some of that you know violet kind of color just kind of pull that along I'll push my brush different you can go change sizes of brushes so you get some different looks there but uh, this will look kind of like a little wave you can build that up like a little wave is you know just beginning to form there maybe tap a bit of the shadow underneath it here boom like that so you get some uh, different little looks to it but it's going to give it a lot more depth to the color and I'll do this several times and so I'll take some of the violet I run the violet along the shadow edge of the wave some of that light violet and just kind of tap that through work that through like that so you get some of that movement like that and then, where's the highlight? You know, maybe a touch of yellow with that. Where's the light coming from? The light's going to hit right up through here. Let's get a bit of that power right up there. Here, just see, I use, I love the, I love these fusion brushes with the corners and let them kind of, you know, flare out and stuff like that, and get some nice uh, interest and stuff going on. Let's pull some of this down. A, a little bit more this way give a little bit more power here down like that and uh, see then I'll work the dark and it takes just a little bit to build up some of this paint but once you do you get enough paint on there that's when let's take a little cerulean that's where you start to get some of this beautiful look after I get enough paint on there then I can just lightly streak and lift up and you know, create all kinds of nice, you know, movement to the ocean. And, um, you know, find yourself some really great photos of some oceans and stuff that you can, the turning of them that you can find. And, uh, you know, just slowly work it. So I'm going to uh, do exactly this, work through the colors violets down into the shadows and into the troughs and then uh, and deep violets and then softer violets up through here and then as the wave gets really transparent and stuff maybe a little bit of cerulean up there look at the prettiness of that cerulean right there just dragging right see how easy that is to drag and very slow guys don't pull fast that causes it to blend too much and you don't get that churning movement of the water so don't pull fast, pull slow there, and you'll get an, a better look to it. So 
let's put a bit of light right there like that's a smaller wave I start with the bigger waves and then I'll start working a little bit smaller and you can just lift off some of it slow like this just find that nice curvature of it a little deep as you get down into the trough a little deeper but leave some of this this draggy like this because that just makes the the ocean really churn and maybe a few little lines of some light color there like that you know and kind of drag it along it everything is going to slide so nice and so easy and uh, so i'm going to do this for a few minutes then we'll come back and i'll show you some more stuff on the uh, on the ship how i'm going to work the ship but this is really fun to paint into like this okay have some fun okay everyone so i put a little bit more into that now i'm going to show you another way to and this is if i want to get really a lot of power to the ocean and i think i might want to have it with this one is i use the brush to give the the initial movement to the ocean and I'm going to use the knife. This is a Liquitex number five painting knife. Okay, I'm going to use the knife to refine it. So let's uh, take, for example, we'll take down some of my violet. And I kind of always knife mix this. I'm going to slide in some of my open medium into this. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is so everything here is still wet. And see, and you can see like what I'm working right here is let's see let's change that point this one go this way so i'll slide the knife here like this see and the knife slides really easy over that open medium and at that time and instead of the stroke now you get this more of a foamy kind of look to the ocean there just like that so you get even more now we can slide right over here to some of this light pick up this light don't mix it up real well. Make sure you have some open medium into that. And we'll pick up, maybe this is the light part of this wave coming back down this way. Boom, just like that, see? And we'll grab this, maybe pull that down. Boom, just like that. Get that that movement right there with that. So see, that can add some of that foamy look to the wave. Then you can also come back and push and take some of that out, redirect a bit to uh, you know, add even more of that churning look to it. But the knife works really well as well. Now we can use that to add some of the violet color here to the shadow side of the wave here like that. And uh, maybe we're gonna do just a little bit of the light edge here. So I like to, when I'm painting an ocean that has a, a lot of uh, a lot of churning, a lot of interest, and if my subject can afford the uh, the ocean to be really churned up, then I uh, will use the knife in there. See the, the difference that that knife can give, and you can do just little bits of some of that motion there, like that. Let's uh, push some of that violet and the light Get that open medium in there. It's very important because it helps also with the transparency of it. And we'll push some of that right back here. Maybe pull some of that right there like that down. And let's get some more mid-value movement. So we'll darken down. See, I don't want to mix too much. See, I want this. So I'll pick that up. And just pull that right along that edge there like that see and that puts in that good movement there that I want to have into that water and then a bit more violet here as we head down into that trough here so the combination you know on there's a lot of paintings I do and I, I want to get a lot of interest to it I use the combination of the knife and the brush and this is going to be one that's going to have a lot of paint. And I'll use that combination knife and the brush. So I can fix and get just a little bit more interest right in there. See, just pull back. Now pull slow, because if you pull past, if you wiggle too much, you know, you want to you want to leave some of that mark, that, that movement there, that shows that good movement of that wave, see? So you want some of that, that to stay, okay? Pull slow, 
mix up that open medium, get in there, make sure you have that coat of extender over the whole surface because that is what makes it really happen because it causes everything to slide. Don't pull it too many times, it will mix up on you. Change your colors, change your tones so that you get some interest going on in there as well. You know, so change, change up. Get some of that dark right in there. Work that through there. And it just adds more to the ocean, okay? Now, go play again, <laughs> okay? I'll keep on going. Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, I worked on that a little bit more. I've seen the color depth that you get in there. And this is the one of the main ways. I might put some of that in there, but I do like the dark that's going to contrast up there against the boat. And we have to really work on our boat a little bit more before we get so wrapped up into this ocean. But there is one thing I wanted to show you. Um, and this is still really wet, but there is a great technique that I like to use with the acrylics. It's, and remember so many times, like in the roses and some of these other videos, I always tell you that water is our solvent. Now I'll just take some of my dirty water. This is some of my real dirty blue water that I have here. And I'll just push that lightly into my uh, um, three quarter inch brush, just a little bit of it. And as this starts, this is still really wet, but so you have to be very careful. And this is where the fusion brushes really shine. But as this starts to tack up, if I think it's a little bit too much, I take a little bit of water and you can see, now watch, I just work it a couple times. See, I'm pulling the blue up into that white and I'm slowly softening it out, see? And working it like that. So rather than like blending it with an extender or something like that, which can happen too fast, this is where I like that white. Remember the white I didn't add that open medium to, so it stays a little stiffer and will stay up on the top. And so I can work, now watch what happens, see? I can work and that blue will come up and I'll just slowly work a little bit of that right in like that to uh, soften out some of that movement that I want to have in that water leave in, in the ocean here. So maybe I have a little bit over here. I'll just lightly, lightly, lightly with the brush just go over the surface ever so lightly with a bit of that water and that'll that will calm down some of my brush work, some of that knife, especially that knife, it calms down that knife and uh, really incorporates it. Now, I left it a quite a bit more cerulean right in here, which I really like going right up into that. So see, there might be an area like right in here. I may want to just pull slightly different angle with some of that water, see, in my brush. And that works it and pull real slow and just work it a couple of times. And that will not only smooth out your ocean a bit, but it, it uh, you know, doesn't do it too much with the white because we didn't add the stuff to it, but it'll move and it'll give a, a sm almost like a smeared out little look to it and it calms down the ocean, it gives you a, a really good look. And that's what we do as artists, see? With artists, we try to figure out all kinds of techniques. And I can paint oceans like this with acrylics a lot easier than I did with oils because and nothing against oils, because I was an oil artist for a long time, but I have all of these different techniques that I can, you know, I can control the consistencies of my white so that my blues soften out faster than my whites. And see, I like that right back in through there. I might want to soften this edge just a bit. So I'll take a little bit of water in my brush, which is my solvent, and I'll paint back through and just soften some of those back edges right back there and push that back and so and it's a lot of fun all right so there's a lot of these kind of techniques and whether i show it to you and this is the thing so many people that watch the channel they'll say okay well i want to only paint roses well you know this is what i've always said in the 30 days of roses and everywhere guys if you want to learn to be an artist learn these types of techniques because i'll apply it to flowers i'll apply it to portraits i'll apply it to you know animal portraits um you know i'll apply it all over my painting here. See how I can just lift some of that off and push that right where I want to have that interest. Works so well. Now, I'm going to continue working on, I'm going to work this, the boat again, and then we're going to work the clouds again, okay? And we don't have too much time, so I've got to quit talking. But it's so true, guys. It's so very true. Let's start working another right where we want that light hit to hit. And 
I, you know, now that I have my ocean and stuff, I can see, I can start building some texture and this is what I'll do. I'll do this boat here four or five times, putting some of that real thick textures in that I want to have. Now I'll, I'll go maybe to blue with a little bit of the burnt sienna into it and get some of these lovely kind of grays in here. And this is where you use just fun calligraphy here to uh, get some of these differences. Pull across, pull down in a few areas, get some of that nice calligraphy into that, that boat and into this trawler. Get a little darker, cooler, maybe a little more violet as you go back. Work it again and you work it again. And on a trawler like this, I'll, you know, on this guy, I'm going to work him several times. I got that a little dark violet, but I'm going to go ahead and add a couple strokes, a couple marks of it here, and uh, then turn around and uh, warm it and add some of that, and then turn around and do it all over again here as I work some of this. You know, a lot of artists work these kinds of things here, a lot of verticals, a lot of ups and downs, but I like to do some horizontals because I like to... Some of the interest that are just dragging, see, just drag the edge all the way down on the ferrule and just pull across like that. You see me do that in landscapes and everything, and see, it just adds. Add a little green to this, a little different. Mod whites are all colors, right? We know that from color theory. And so there's these boats, even though it's a white boat, it should carry all of these colors and stuff. And, and then as we get more tones on here, then we'll start to small down our brush and uh, work even smaller ones. But we still got quite a ways of quite a bit of building to do on this boat here before we get to that part here. Like that. And yeah, we'll, and I'll touch that in. Let's get a bit of light back up here on this edge and I can start adding as I'm building this and doing this I can start adding some of the um, you can add a little extender you can slow it down a bit if you want I love to paint the boat now mostly uh, acrylic so I get it to dry so I'm laying on some real thick kind of colors let's get a bit of that phthalo and some burnt sienna I love the deep richness of that phthalo and the grayness of that burnt sienna. Deeper, darker color right down in here. Pulling up on that side there. Probably a little too much there, but that's what I do. <laughs> I always paint too much and then take it out, you know? And see, it gives me a different edge. See, I can get that nice little look over there. Let's add a bit of that here. And use smaller brush marks, model brush. In other words, not a perfectly mixed brush at all. And uh, get some of those. Now this might be a, a real good, it looks on my reference photo there, there's a really big light hit here. But you know me, I'll, I'll even change my reference photo too. So I'm known for doing that. Let's get that back bit here. Side of that boat. And, uh, you know, I might even, where it would be natural to pull down, just pull some small across like that. Maybe a bit of our sienna in there and start building some of the texture with that. So I create, and see, I like the broken line. So I use the chisel of the brush to draw a little bit and grab some broken lines. Let's pull right along the edge here. The gunwale of the boat here, which is the edge here. Pull that edge, leave that little bead of texture there. So that kind of draws that just a bit there, see? And um, this is the kind of work that I do in the detailing of it. I'll work these colors. But you know, it's like that rose, the petal edging technique. Remember I take that and I put that little bead a little bead of that light color right on the corner of my brush and I use that to uh, to draw and you know you can use that anywhere and anywhere here to set that brush down and then just draw that little edge and see it just pops up the, the
the gunwale of that boat, the edge of that boat, up a little higher. And so, you know, it doesn't make a difference whether you're painting a rose or painting a, a boat. You use some of the same types of techniques. At least I do. You know, I, I develop them and it's like, okay, that that gives me a pretty good edge there, a nice detailed edge. Why can't I use it on a rose? And I'll go paint it on a rose. So, I, you know, and if I only painted roses all my life, I might not be able to, I might not think of that, to do that with that particular, uh, with that particular technique. Might not think about, you know, using that on a rose, but by painting a boat, I see what the, what the edge gives me, and then I can uh, use that someplace else. So now I'm going to build this up, then we'll grab some other gray colors here, a little burnt sienna with that, and let's add that edge, that docking edge there, burnt sienna and blue, and pull that, let's reset that, burnt sienna. A little blue right up there, right up around that point. And I'm a little thick there, but I don't mind that. But see, I like the color. See the, the color changing through there. And I might come in and just tap along that a bit with some light color. This is, And it all depends on how much time I'm going to take on a painting to how much detail and stuff that I that I give it like that, you know. Um, let's darken that down with a little more blue into that and come right down here onto the other side. Maybe uh, stay out of the water there. Oh, I was going to add a bit of burnt sienna, but no, I like that. I like that a lot. And um, let's take just a touch of that sienna and stuff here and Add that in there, and there's the. Now I put out mostly. I put out a little bit of this Hansa, so I can make myself an orange. There's an orange band that belongs up here on the top part of the boat here, and uh, it just pulls right around. And I'll just use my brush like this. And again, I like the broken edges that I can get here. Maybe even flip over to some burnt sienna here. So I pull that right along that edge here. Change the tone a bit. There we go. And uh, maybe tap into some of this burnt sienna and the blue and maybe use it a little different. Pull down along here. You know, maybe a few little touches, maybe a, a small horizontal. That's what's going to give you the interest when you break up your your strokes between verticals and horizontals as you're looking to kind of decorate this thing up, you see? And uh, so that looks pretty good. Let's uh, dirty up some light, some whites with all of that color. And uh, yeah, we'll just model all of that up and we'll use that for just some of the edges or trim around the windows. Just ideas of this stuff around the windows. You don't even have to do it all the way. You can also, you know, one thing that I would many times do is just paint too big and then take it back down with the dark inside set of the of the uh, window color on the inside, see? But just little edges of it is all it really needs to say, okay, there's little windows there. So you don't need to go perfect all the way around, especially those of you that are watching the channel that are beginners. You know, there were so many times I tried to figure out ways to paint something absolutely perfect, you know, to, to get that little frame in, and you don't. You, you actually paint it with some broken edges and some other colors and all that kind of stuff, and that's what really gives you a, a beautiful look, you know, to your boat. Now, that, if I want to be absolutely correct to this ship, this should be a little bit more in shadow right up here because that's, this is sitting back in shadow, shadow by that one part of the boat right in there, um, which comes out right here, which I kind of filled in all the way, which I shouldn't have, so I'll correct that to the 
photo here. So we'll correct this back up to part of the boat that it should be right there. And then we'll bring this back out later. Sometimes I just get going with the painting and I forget about the architecture of the boat. There we go, that's better. And we'll put that nice little light stroke right there. Maybe that little bead of texture, so we drag that. Pull some of that down. See, that just gives good structures to the boat. Let's, and I'll let that acrylic, that's the beautiful thing, I'll let that acrylic dry a bit, okay? And um, so this is the, the edge that we're hitting with the light. And I'll hit that light again, nice textured edge there, right there. And let's put a bit of that right up underneath here. Boom, right there, right there in that area there. And a softer little shadow. So put a softer little shadow back up here. So this is what I'll, I'll do back and forth on this little boat here. And uh, like I said, I'll put a nice finished, uh, you know, photo of the finished one in there. But that's what I work on is building those textures back and forth, building the lights and darks. And I'll use the edge, like we could use the edge of, you know, with the, uh, this, like I might put on just a bit of the chisel like this of the edge and then come back with that bar again and put on some more additional light but you know really on to the forward part of this boat I would probably take a stroke like that a couple more times till I really get some nice texture on it there and uh, really texture that up and work on that so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to work on that for a little bit more I've got ooh, less than 20 minutes left of the filming so I'll save some for working on the cloud show you guys some of the cloud okay I'm going to go work on this boat, and I'll see you back here real quick. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Well, I just finished some more of the stuff, and you can see I'm really building up texture here on the front of that, that ship, and, man, it really just kind of comes forth in there. I took a little bit of blue and just splashed at an angle like that to make him look like he's cutting through the waves. I still have some more rigging and stuff to do in here, some lines and stuff, but uh, we'll see that in the final photo, and uh, um, I'm going to wait until I do the sky. Now, I just gave this a nice coat of the extender medium. We're going to follow right along the same type of uh, thing we were just doing on the... Um, Big one. I just have my three-quarter brush here that I just set down someplace. <laughs> I just lost it. Well, I guess I'll use my one inch. Where did I just set that? Anyway, um, so I put a coat of extender over the whole thing, and then I'll have my open medium and my light. And I'm gonna maybe put a, a bit of the warm, uh, just a, a just a touch of some of that warmth right up through here, just as a. This is, good. this is just a glaze, and you can see it just does a wonderful thing. It'll carry just a bit of that warmth. And then we'll start uh, with some grays. My grays are that I've been using, like I use on the boat, is blue and some of that red or a little bit of burnt sienna. And uh, we'll add just a touch of warmth to this here. And we'll work. Yeah, that's a nice warm. See that a little bit into the clouds there. Um, just a bit of it then we'll go we're going to go all the way to pure almost pure, almost pure just probably 9.95 here of light and work that and if you want the clouds here if you want the clouds to have some real wispy edges I don't want that right around in here I'm going to actually go just to pure white right up there and uh just build that edge, I think. Just a powerful edge right up there. See, I like that. Maybe some right up here. So I'm thinking where the light is hitting, right up to there, we'll build that. Now, I can take that and smear that around like this and smear that edge just to lose and fuzzy that edge like you'll see in clouds sometimes where you can build that up pretty heavy right there. And I kind of like it like that, a little different than what I've done before. And so I'll take that right up there and it'll smear. Now see the white, I didn't add the open medium, just like I did in the, uh, just like I did in the wave. Now see, look at that. See how that just 
builds that up. Um, just like I did in the wave, I didn't add the open medium to it, so it will tack up a little quicker here. And then uh, let's just add little bits of it right back here, right back, just fading away back through there. Just little bits of that storm coming here. I've got just a great picture of that. I, I love it out here in where in Nebraska where our gallery is. Uh, more so than what I had for years and years in Pennsylvania and California. And, but I love it out here because it's so open. And you can see, you know, 100 miles in the sky. It's just amazing. And you know, I'll, I'll, with that extender on there, see, I can just whisper like that a bit and soften that cloud out. I love to use my hands. I would never use my hands with oils, but I can use them here with the acrylics, no problem. And see, that just smears those out smears those edges a bit, leave that nice bright blue, leave a little bit of gray there for some of the shadow of it. Matter of fact, we can build a bit more of a gray, violet, light violet here. Shadow, a bit of the burnt sienna in that. Lighten that up. I changed these colors. Now you can do this multiple times. Look at how much smoother the second run through is, see? Running that through, smear that. You see on that wet surface like that, so you can smear that around and catch that real wispy look. Or you can leave it a little bit more of that, you know, a, a little bit more powerful look. I'm gonna, you know, it's kind of hard to know. I, I want to play with this just a bit to work this out. Now you can also, you know, try a brush. Try which the way in which a brush will work to. Uh, work those edges. So I'll make some different layers of the clouds here, like that. And just like I see in that photo there, and there's some that are just streaked down. Now see how smooth and soft that is coming around like that? Because it's painting right on that extender. And now, you know, you start adding, as you get to these shadows here, start adding this open medium and it's going to uh, glaze on even smoother and do some wonderful stuff. We might even try a little cerulean and cerulean in the burnt sienna is a wonderful gray as well and it's easier to make a gray with the cerulean than any other color because the cerulean has about the same power as the burnt sienna so they go to gray. See and that's a beautiful warm kind of deep gray there. We can push some of those clouds right up there, right up in front of that, can have some of those gray clouds, like, and maybe even just a touch of violet into that. So it changes a bit more here. Just kind of model those together, and then you can smear them. Sometimes you see me use my left hand like this, and that comes from, I will sometimes, if I feel like I'm getting too consistent the same with one hand I'll switch hands and because my left hand does it different than my right hand does I know that sounds kind of crazy but it does work for me and I'll put a bit of that grayness right here onto the bottom walk that across a bit here just kind of smear that around here just like that see that works really really well let's get a nice deeper storm coming violet over there. Maybe a bit of the burnt sienna in it. Push some of that right up in there. Look at those models of those colors coming off. That's what, it's just nice. And let's smear that around. And again, you can use a brush, you know, but see this is, I love the feel of that open medium and the uh, extender on the surface. This is what gives you those really soft clouds, movements of those clouds here. And uh, take a little open medium and a little bit of extender here. We'll just pull some of that down, streak some of that down, right through there. That's it, leave some of that streaking right there. That looks pretty good. And I'll step back and take a look at that. That's pretty good. Maybe put a one or two uh, little lighter gray kind of 
cloud movements right up here into the front, which does happen here. As you can see, it's just, it's just a wonderful way to uh, build some of those clouds and give you some really neat looks. You can strike it on pretty heavy and then just smear it out and around, build it up like you see a cloud, and you know, you take a couple times building color. And you can also take like my big extender brush here. And I, you don't see me do this too often because I don't like to really like blend stuff out, but you can do what I call incorporate it, soften it, some of that movement out like this. And that just gives you, maybe pull some of that down, that look down like that, follow that same angle there. And you get a nice look, see? It's a beautiful kind of cloud look. And a lot of people just don't think you can do this with acrylics, and you can. You just got to use the right technique and the right medium. I'm going to have to push that uh, bar back up in front of this, but maybe a little bit more, let's see, light coming from right up over here because the light's coming from the left. So let's push that light right up there a bit more like that now just take and you if you use like this is a big fusion two inch it's a magnificent brush i use for for uh varnish and if i want it really really soft i use a dry brush but this has just a bit of the of the extender in it i'm putting it on and i'll use that here just to soften through some of these clouds right there that's pretty nice let's um work some of that darker I like that photo there it has some darker clouds right up in the front and uh, so I put a few well that's not quite warm enough let's also thin that bit of extender so it's a big painting I'll probably uh, add just a few more little things to it uh, here and there I've got the rigging to add to it and I'll show you guys that at the, uh, you know, into the photo. Now that's a bit dark, but I'm going to soften it here. Um, I'll show you guys that in the uh, um, final, you know, photos and stuff like that. You'll see some of the final little workings that I do that I like to do. And we'll soften some of that with some medium gray. Maybe push that around a bit here. See, I like that. A different way of doing clouds than what you've seen me do on some of the other things. This is another way in which I do it, do them that I really like. I'll push some of that, some of those lights and stuff coming back behind that. And uh, But that was just a magnificent cloud that day. Um, it does have a, a bit of a darker area. We'll even take some cerulean with that right up, flatter area right up through here. That sets that, so I'll set that in and then pull down. Just kind of whisper those together here. And boom. Yeah, get that kind of that kind of look to it. But it's beautiful. I like this kind of clear blue and some of those light colors. I might make another hit here. But I've got some more rigging to put on. I'm going to use that little stick and a smaller brush, put in some of the rigging and all that kind of stuff. And then those of you that are in the membership, I'll put the final photos in and I'll put some of my reference stuff up there so you guys can paint it. And as always, if you have any kind of questions, make sure you hit the comments down there. Just ask me the question, okay? Those of you, there's links over in the video description to our Mimi group. If you want to post photos and show us what you're doing and have some feedback, we have a couple hundred teachers and painters and some very uh, beginners that are just started out in the group that's a lot of fun and uh, we like to encourage each other so you can look at joining that group as well okay but we ask for acrylic artists because it's a, it's an acrylic painting group i have just a little bit of a, a light reflection to put in there too i can't forget to do that but uh, thanks for joining me i'll bring this back all up and then you guys maybe should look for the final photos and stuff you have anything else you want to see i know i've got a list of it but uh, just in the comments, make sure that you hit that. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click that little bell that uh, that's there, and that'll tell you whenever we're going to be releasing another video. Got another one coming. I have a beautiful floral that I have to set up and paint with you guys. A floral still life, so it has a little bit more work into that. We got that one going.
coming up. I'll probably do that this weekend, and uh, we'll get that up, okay? Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Give it a try, and I'll see you on the uh, next one. Bye-bye.